Welcome back to KSP to Mars, episode 37. I'm Lorenzo and today we're launching again a probe to Mercury and Venus. This Mercury probe, it has many solar panels, experiments, radiators and nuclear reactors, combines all beautiful forms of energy, nuclear, solar, chemical, ionic, although that's not really a source of power, it's also electrical, to blast off this small probe to Mercury with a delta V of in total 27 kilometers per second. It's the best we've made so far and seeing as how the Mercury probe is really the only one that failed on delta V pure and simple, we are going to repeat that and well we're not playing around, we brought a lot of delta V. So I'm going to launch this in orbit and I will see you there. Let's have a look at that. This is the same launcher as always. So this uh, launch procedure, I, I did it completely a few episodes back. And here we have the probe in orbit. Look at that. It has a nuclear stage with three drop tanks and a center tank. And here it has a core stack of xenon containers with solar panels, more solar panels, a small suite of sensors and some heat radiators. These heat radiators are likely overkill but the solar panels do generate waste heat and we are going to Mercury and well I was thinking maybe if uh, Mercury has all been scienced out and we have some Delta V left we could um, use it for a sun dive to get close to the sun and well if that happens and the solar panels still work we might need some heat radiating capacity. Not sure about that but I thought it would be prudent to include them. Uh, the vessel now, the, with the upper stage still attached, still has 17,000 meters per second of delta V. So I'm confident we're at least going to make it to Mercury and maybe, well, maybe we will make it to uh, to a low solar encounter as well. If we pull up the Kerbal alarm clock here, we see the Kerb to Moho, which is of course, of course Earth to Mercury, will happen in about, in about 20 days, and the Earth to Venus, which is Eve here, will happen in 30 days. So let's get back to the vehicle assembly building and launch a Venus probe into orbit as well, so that when these launch windows roll around, they will be ready to launch. And back on the ground here we have the Venus probe 2. It looks very familiar to the previous Venus probe with the most important difference that we have two battery banks here so that we don't run out of battery. We have a um, pressure atmospheric sensor and I put two of the small solar panels here in the hope that they might survive being in the atmosphere during re-entry and can provide a trickle charge if even these batteries prove to be insufficient. Also, if this does work, that means that we can sense science from the upper atmosphere because running out of battery won't be scary. Um, so I'm going to put this on a rocket and send it off to Venus. This whole bit is a bit superfluous because uh, the orbital science, that went off without a hitch. So the um, uh, material bay and goo canisters that were here uh, are no longer here. And this, well, having this as a separate vessel doesn't make a lot of sense because I don't need it. But it's, well... It, it's not a huge delta V penalty and we're having uh, more than enough delta V, 10.6 kilometers per second. On the upper stage here, this will be mated to the, to the rocket that we always use nowadays. Um, so that's going to be fine. This is just going to be the, the Venus lander. If this works, then we can think about uh, attempting a larger lander, possibly a 2.75 meter diameter um, lander with a refinery, some legs and uh, interesting other things. But for now it's just going to be this one, the first probe on the ground on another body. Well, technically Venus and uh, Mars both had landers on them already, but n none of them reached the surface in communicating state and that is kind of a prerequisite for doing interesting science. So I'm going to take care of this and I will show it to you when we uh, return to it in orbit as I always do. So. See you then. And there we are, safely deposited this probe in orbit as well. We look at the launch clock, 20 and 30 days remaining until the respective launch windows. And in that time, I think there's one more launch that I want. <gasps> no! I was going to say I want to do the, uh, I want to launch the big nuclear reactors to the space station, but that can wait. I am instead going to launch a solar sail, that new technology. Yes, I'm going to check that out. So, once again, see you back on the ground. And again, back on the ground, here is the, with the ship, the Solar Sailor. 
On the top here is a very small probe core with, uh, well, the gravioli meter, the pressure meter, well, that doesn't make any sense, but, well, perhaps it will encounter an atmosphere somewhere, a temperature meter, meter, and, of course, the magnetometers, some solar panels for uh, maintenance power, and here the solar sail that will unfurl and hurl us to, well, uh, places unknown. Here is uh, well a booster stage made by an ion engine which can hopefully be powered by these four solar panels but then again we're dunking it close to the sun so that should probably work and then below that the well, more conventional nuclear um, booster stage. T in total it's got almost 14, 14 kilometers per second of course that's not counting the solar sail which in all reasonableness accounts for infinity. So once again I'm going to add the rocket and I will see you uh, well on the other side around the planet. And for the third time today here we are in orbit and fortunately because this is more of a technology demonstrator let's see what we can do achievement mission uh, we don't have to wait for a launch window all we're trying to do is get as low uh, to the sun as possible on the conventional fuel and then Unloading, unfurling the solar sail that will then, well, either do nothing for us or possibly propel us up to great speed out of the system. So I tinkered a maneuver node, put it here, oh, and made it such that it would, well, eject me pretty much retrograde to Earth's orbit around the Sun because we want to reduce that speed and, um, well, plummet towards the Sun really. Orbital speed for Earth around the Sun, if I recall, is about 30 kilometers per second. Uh, we're not going to be able to reduce that to zero, but then, well, if we did that, then we would fall straight into the Sun. That's not what we want either. Um, let's keep an eye. Is our periapsis? It is falling, but not fast enough. We're not going to encounter the atmosphere. I was a little bit worried thrusting toward the planet with this big upper stage, but we will now switch to the nuclear engine, and that will gently push us out of the sphere of influence of Earth. So let's see when this burns out. Should be any second now. There we go. Separating that and firing up the nuclear stage. Now we have a rather lengthy burn ahead of us. I'm just going to... No, I don't need to unfurl those before the ion engine starts because I have these that will keep the, uh, the battery stopped up. This burn is now slated. This burn is 6 kilometers per second. This is a little bit arbitrary. I just made it so that the ejection angle would be as straight as it was going to get. Um, we have in total um, about 10.5 kilometers per second of delta V in this um, nuclear engine, and then we have three more in the ion engine. Um, that is only a tiny addition here on top of the rocket. So I'm going to do that burn and get the periapsis as close to the to the sun as possible and I will see you when uh, well that is a little bit closer to reality. So there we are the nuclear stage has burned out we are currently at just under 16 kilometers per second relative to the earth and a quick look at the solar system map means that our periapsis is creeping very very close to the sun. Um, I feel as though my computer might be crashing. No, it's not. So we have a periapsis here that's close to the sun, but we can increase, well, increase the speed, decrease the periapsis by a little bit more with our ion drive. Of course, for that, we want to extend the solar panels. So let's go ahead and do that. Mm, there they are. And it does appear as though those panels will not nearly be enough to support the, the the power draw of the ion engine. You can look here at the resources tab that the electric charge is depleting. I'm going to rotate that a little bit and see how we can get this number, the number of power drained, the lowest. I think it's about eight, eight and a half. That's our well let's call it our optimal optimal attitude for solar power collection um, if I lock the attitude like this uh, the ship does not have a lot of control authority anymore we can right 
if that would stabilize then the panels also have a chance to to adjust their angle to the sun I'm going to keep it like this and now I'm going to throttle back the ion engine so that it's balanced so here we have a tiny tiny charge and we're at one third thrust for the ion engine which is a bit of a bummer because in that way it's going to take a while for the drive to burn through this 1400 xenon fortunately I have a shopping trip to do today and I will do that over the burn of this ion drive so I will see you in a few hours when this has completed and here we finally are at the end of the ionic burn this was the longest by far it was only two tanks of xenon in a single engine but I couldn't burn for more than 30-40% of thr uh, full thrust so it took me about one and a half, two hours at uh, times for time acceleration but the result is clear we are leaving earth at 17.4 kilometers per second and that has put our periapsis fairly low fairly close to the sun we are going there and there we will unfurl the solar sail and see what will happen of course I'm going to ditch the ion engine as well wow that's shooting off that should have given us about half a meter per second of extra delta V or some fraction of that here we have just the solar sail now and of course the magnetometers that I will activate just so that they may look good and then we are going to put a alarm in the Kerbal alarm clock we're leaving the sphere of influence of Kerbin in six hours that says uh, that that does say something for the speed of course we've already been traveling for about six hours as well in game time or possibly even more ten hours in game time and so we leave the sphere of influence in less than a day whereas a normal moon trip takes a takes a few days to get from earth to the moon which orbit we've already passed in less than those 10 hours so this probe is really booking it out of the uh, earth sphere of influence is what I'm trying to say and we will rejoin it when it is at periapsis only oh, no, for that before we can add that alarm we have to time warp to the uh, sphere of influence of the Sun so let's go ahead and do that and I'm loving how the alarm clock takes care of the warping I forget now I think it was Darlock Ahi one of my viewers who suggested I use this and it it really was a good suggestion I'm very happy that I did and it makes the game uh, a lot more manageable so thanks for that suggestion and here we are now in solar orbit time to periapsis is 70 days so that will happen somewhere after the launch of these two probes I'm going to add that in as an alarm uh, periapsis alarm photon sailor unfurl sail no not fail that's foreshadowing no unfurl the sail and add that alarm so that's going to be it for today tomorrow I will launch um, these two probes and will probably time warp forward to the first if I remember my transfer windows correctly I will launch these probes and then I'm going to have to forward to the unfurling of the sail at 70 days and depending on how interesting that is and how long everything takes I might fast forward to one of the probes arriving as well but for now this was Lorenzo as I'm always uh, thanks for watching check back tomorrow for some sailing action and some more probing and I will see you next time goodbye oh there's one more thing I wanted to say to put into perspective the Delta V of this probe uh, as it has been applied to it now in the stock game that's enough to get into orbit around Kerbin obviously escape Kerbin get in orbit around the Sun come to a complete stop relative to the Sun and then get into a similar orbit as Kerbin but in an opposite direction at the same speed again with change so that's how much bigger this solar system is than the stock game. With that said, see you tomorrow, goodbye.